Um, and next up is Stephen Fowler. Uh, and uh, we are going to have a short discussion about his project, uh, which I will share here in a second. So Stephen, uh, perhaps you'd like to say a little bit about the project and the collaboration with Bard Torgerson. Oh, thanks, David. Well done tonight. I know that we're going along so we can be brief here and thank you to you, Paul and Astra for inviting me. So I, I did a collaboration with the Norwegian avant-garde poet and, and novelist, Bård Torgerson, called Crowfinger. Um, and to a certain extent, it was part of a, a year of stuff I'm doing now until the end of the year where I'm publishing photo poetry, which began when we first met David at the course I taught at the Photographer's Gallery in London called The Writing Eye, where I began to theorize and explore photo poetry. So without waffling, essentially the theorization I'd done around photo poetry had been that there are four possible ways to create it with the image and the text upon text upon the image um, of, to build a poem of images, i.e. to build language with images, um, or in, to take a picture of language. Um, and after all this faffing and all these various explorations of working with collage, of working with my own photography, one day Bord, um, who is known as a very radical artist in Norway, uh, I think trying to troll me, sent me very gentle uh, pastoral pictures of Norwegian nature. Although he's Norwegian, his sense of humor is hard to read, so therefore perhaps he wasn't trolling me. And so I just wrote upon them using paint. Um, and I deliberately saw that as a way to break up the beauty of the traditional composition of nature photography by writing um, offhand, uncorrectable poems, because I was using paint, where once you press return, you can't go back upon them. And so they're more fluid than my normal work. And also sometimes trying to make them so faint that they become part of the landscape. And I know when you bought a copy, David, you did say on Twitter, I can barely read them. And that, that made me so happy, <laughs> that made me so happy. Nothing could bring me more joy than the idea that my tricks and my alienation of readers had been massively successful. So Borden and I have been friends. This got published and then it was quite successful in Norway and no one could understand it because he's known as a very radical artist and these photos are very, well, they're lovely, but they're also but quite banal. And I think that's the point too. I, I think that my comment might have been, we don't have one of those images, but there's a couple where the text sort of runs very small and narrowly along the trunks of trees. Uh, yes, which I which, pro which prompted and, and you know it it you know it, it led me to wonder to what extent you know the design of the work and the the book and otherwise was meant to even recreate a little bit of the experience of, of being a little bit lost in the forest. Yeah, it was more to piss board off and it worked. <laughs> He wasn't overly happy that some of my text was unreadable because he valued the text more than I did. So to me, I really saw the, the actual material of the language as being sometimes so embedded in the landscape that it was frustrating, which seems to me to be both a joke, a valuable joke, but also perhaps one could draw out a poetics of indeed being lost or being hidden, language itself not being clear in its actual auspices, its appearance, as well as its semantic content. So yeah, you need a magnifying glass basically for some of them. Well, I, I probably need one for almost everything, but that, that's a different issue. Uh, Fair enough. Yeah, I've had uh, some snotty emails about this book and there's nothing better in the world than someone <laughs> feeling your uh, deliberate gesture as an accident. Uh, in that respect, how did you expect folks or did you think about sort of how people would try to read the book uh, other than Bard and, and, and annoying him? Well, that's it. I mean, later on in the year, thanks to Paul at Hester Glock and um, the Aleph, my selected photo poetry will come out as a, as a nice thick book. And then in a month, thanks to James at Steel Incisors, my selected collages will come out. And my book, Sticker Poems, has just come out. And they're all photo poetry in a sense. So for years and years, I've spent <laughs> way too long taking uh, film photos, deep editing software, marginal stuff, teaching courses with hundreds and hundreds of examples, 
So it, it brings me great joy that the first photo poetry I publish properly, people think is a technical failure in a sense. So what I really wanted to do with this is go back to that. In fact, it was, I think it was said in the first talk about the simplicity of what photo poetry might achieve when it's set out like this. So I thought I was being too clever often with photo poetry. I was trying to reinvent the wheel. I was trying to, I was so scared of doing a with, you know, a juicy Ted Hughes, you know, a with, you know, a nice juicy picture of a nice face and then a nice poem of that face describing the face. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that, but I was so afraid of it I was monkeying around and this brought it back. He sent me pictures, I wrote on top of them, I sent them to him, they got published. And, and there's a beauty in that simplicity with the little intricate inside workings here where my poems are trying to go against the way that humans see nature. Uh, it's trying to resist the idea that this is all beautiful because in fact, nature loves to snack upon us, uh, etc. Uh, what well, seems like it might be a good note to wrap up on, but any other sort of comments you want to make about the, this project? Um, it was a joy to do, and I would be a big, huge advocate for Microsoft Paint. So just a plug out there for the Microsoft Corporation. Um, go paint. And thanks, David. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Astra. And thanks to the uh, 83 people who have stayed. It was 99. It was 105. But those of you who have stayed, you're the real ones. Indeed. Uh, so uh, 